This is the gist of what you will be doing all day, is measuring the height of the liquid in capillary tubes. The role of science is really to educate the students so that they understand the material nature of the cultural artifacts that they're dealing with. So what the chemistry is of how paints were made or how plastics are made or the chemistry behind wood and paper and also the degradation of these objects and then also to inform the choices that they make in their restoration materials what the materials are going to do, how they're going to behave as they age, and how that might negatively impact the artwork years down the road. I'm doing an experiment about light bleaching and ethanol, and conservators often um, light bleach aqueously, so in water, but I'm testing to see if it can be done equally as effective in ethanol so that we can light bleach materials or works of art on paper that have media that are water soluble or water sensitive. Here we care a great deal about the students understanding of methodology and what goes into the creation of these works of art both from actually hands-on practice, you know, making tempera paintings, making paper, reproducing these historical techniques so that when you see an object Later on, you know exactly how it was made and you have a much better feel for how that object and what your treatments will do to it. In science in general, there's a lot of issues that are extremely important for them to learn. And the inorganic side of it is exceptionally important for the objects majors who are usually working with metals, glass, and ceramics. And in order to have a good understanding of how these materials are made and how they react when they're either wet or damaged or aged, they need to understand the basic concept and constructs of those materials to treat them properly. As we add surfactant. The program is designed to teach students how to approach materials from the most basic chemical reactions that they can have in their own backyard. One corrosion here we have was probably a copper oxide like cuprite corrosion. Or they have to learn uh, the alternative technique which is some of the more fancy machines that we have here so they understand how the techniques work what questions they can answer using those techniques and how best to interact with a scientist who can run those. What we have here is a confocal spinning disc microscope. In conservation science at Buffalo State, we're introducing this technology, this instrumentation, to be able to better evaluate surfaces and what's happening to them, either through conservation treatment or through deterioration. And in this particular case, we're looking at some small lithic stones. We also see that there are some pits and also different levels. It's not a very smooth, although it appears smooth and glossy. So now what we need to do is we go to the confocal mode. Be curious, ask questions. This is the best chance you'll ever have to ask questions. But we've extended and we've stitched all the way into the body of the stone. And we're all here to answer them. And we may not know the answers, and nobody may know the answers, but you might be able to figure it out. I think it's great experience looking at things at different levels. First we start by looking at objects with our eyes unaided, and then we'll move to other microscopes. And with this confocal microscope, we can really see the texture of an object at a fine level, and also quantify the measurements so we can get good uh, statistical comparisons. We deal with archaeological artifacts as well, and sometimes those come with different problems altogether. And we train them in addition to not only understanding about those archaeological time periods and the artifacts that were produced in those time periods, how to treat artifacts that come out of the ground and present their own problems such as soluble salts and deterioration from salt corrosion. And every piece brings its own revelations. You may be a paintings major and work on paintings your entire time here, but every painting is different. Every painting has different materials and the sense of, aha, that's what it is, is, is always there no matter how many times you analyze something. And science is here to back all of that up. It's not scary.